No, it is not my normal posting day. And this video is going to be a little different than my normal videos and potentially a little bit less optimistic as well. I have historically skirted around the topic of modern climate change on my channel in fear of skeptics, I guess, a little bit. I'm not sure why I let the comments get to me, given that I understand the science behind what's going on and the crisis and mass extinction event that we are in. However, I think a small part of me also does not like to talk about this topic in as true and as dire a way as I should, because I don't like to admit to myself how dire it really is. But recently, with everything going on here in my country, in the US, I've realized that my future self is going to be really disappointed with my current self if I don't use my voice right now to speak up about not just climate change, but a lot of science issues and research that is currently getting defunded and devalued, when in reality, it matters more than ever right now. And while this video is specifically going to be about climate change, I do want to take a moment to announce something if you are unaware that there will be stand up for science rallies happening all across the U.S. this Friday, March 7th, in the wake of all the defunding that is going on right now. And I'll post the link in my description box if you are interested in going to support science. You do not have to be a scientist. You do not have to be in D.C. where the main rally is taking place. They are taking place all over the country, I think even some in Canada. So I will put a map up here on the screen, but also if you go to that link, you can see where any rallies are close to you and you can attend the closest one to you. I really hope to see you guys out there. It's a really important time for us to speak up and speak out. And before you go into the comments and say this, because I know you will, because you always do, and I don't know why, but no, I'm not getting paid to talk about this or climate change or promote this event. I've never been paid to talk about anything on my channel related to climate change. This is just, in fact, it's quite the opposite. Climate scientists are getting defunded and we're still going to talk about it because it's real and it matters and we don't want to all die in a mass extinction event. I mean, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's, it's also kind of not. So I don't know. I'm getting flustered now, but no, I'm not getting paid to talk about this. We're, we're losing our money, actually, and our grants to do real important science, not just climate science. All science right now is getting defunded here. And uh, it's not great for future of the world, given that science has advanced society quite a bit. <laughs> Oh gosh. Anyway, um, I'm going to move on before I get into a rabbit hole. So with that brief message, let's get into the topic of today's video, which is the fact that Earth's climate has always been changing. So yes, Earth's climate has always been changing. And I've talked extensively on my channel about climate changes Earth underwent millions of years ago, hundreds of millions of years ago, even billions of years ago, long before humans were around to cause any sort of climate change. And this sometimes leads people to believe that climate change is natural. We have nothing to worry about. But this mindset, although correct in some ways, is very flawed in others. Yes, climate change has always been occurring on Earth naturally. But when we look at past rapid global climate change events, these tend to correspond with global mass extinction events. And I don't really think that we want to be part of one. Well, of course, then you're going to have the people that argue that Earth has been way hotter than it is today. It's had CO2 levels in the atmosphere be much higher than they are today. And these are periods in which life was thriving. So clearly not all climate change events in Earth's past led to mass extinctions. Well, this is where rate versus magnitude enter the conversation. It is not the magnitude of CO2 in the atmosphere, nor the magnitude of temperature change that is making our current climate change event dangerous to life on Earth. It is the rate at which temperature is changing, the rate at which CO2 is changing, and thus the rate at which temperature is changing. That 
is the thing that's making our current event dangerous to life and causing a mass extinction event because life cannot adapt quickly enough to keep up with the environmental changes that are caused by these temperature changes. We see over and over again in the rock record that when climate has changed very gradually over tens to hundreds of millions of years, there's typically no global mass extinction because life has time to adapt to those environmental changes. Whereas when climate has changed rapidly over hundreds of thousands to maybe 10 million years, yes, that's still rapid on geologic time, then mass extinctions almost always occur because life does not have time to adapt to the environmental changes. It's actually been estimated that a warming of around 5.2 degrees Celsius at a rate of around 10 degrees Celsius per million years on modern Earth, based on modern Earth conditions, would cause a mass extinction event on par with the big five mass extinction events of the last 500 million years. So the largest mass extinction events of the last 500 million years. And so then you might wonder, are we close to this 10 degrees Celsius per million year rate? Are we close to the five degree threshold? Well, let me just put it this way. We're not warming Earth at 10 degrees Celsius per million years. We're warming Earth at approximately 17,000 degrees Celsius per million years. And that is why it is rapid on geologic time. And it may not seem rapid on human time scales, but on geologic time, that is an incredibly rapid warming event. And no, we haven't reached the five degree threshold yet, but we're likely set to reach it in the next couple hundred years rather than half a million years. So a mass extinction isn't just probable in our future. It isn't just absolutely going to happen in our future. It is not in our future at all. It's happening in our present. And I'll probably have a future video where I'll talk a lot more about the statistics that show this. I won't get into it in this video, but it's happening. And then of course, you're gonna have the people that argue, sure, sometimes in Earth's past, when the climate has changed rapidly, you do see mass extinction events, but there are exceptions. There have been events like rapid global warming events, like for example, the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum or PETM that occurred 56 million years ago that weren't associated with global mass extinctions. And this reasoning is also flawed because one, there were mass extinctions during this event. They just weren't on par with the big five mass extinctions and so we don't classify them as such. And two, one of the reasons this event wasn't as devastating to life as the big five mass extinction events is because it was a warming event that was occurring during a pre-existing, more gradual warming event. And this combined with the fact that life at the time was primarily warm adapted because Earth had been in a steady warm house period for tens of millions of years led to less intense extinctions. If on the other hand, a rapid intense cooling event would have happened at that time, it likely would have been a lot more devastating to life because that life was not cool adapted. This is an important concept to understand because we species on modern Earth are cool adapted. We've evolved in an ice age and thus a warming event will likely be much more devastating to us than a cooling event would, even though both, if rapid, would cause extinctions. And now I know some of you might be thinking, well, wait, you just said we're in an ice age. Why are we worried about global warming if we're in an ice age? And yes, Earth has been in an ice age for the past around 3 million years, meaning ice has been present at both poles. But being in an ice age does not negate the possibility of a rapid global warming event. And on that, I know some of you are also going to say, well, yes, we are in an ice age, but this ice age has been characterized by interglacial periods of cooling and warming. And we are currently not experiencing human caused warming. We're actually just in a natural interglacial warming period. And this is partially true. The current ice age has been characterized by cycles of cooling and warming triggered by periodic changes in Earth's orbit and tilt and not triggered by humans. And yes, we are in a natural interglacial or warming cycle right now. However, humans are adding on to this pre-existing warming trend with even more rapid warming, which might even trigger so many positive feedback mechanisms or essentially tipping point 
mechanisms in Earth's climate system that we might even kick Earth completely out of this ice age if we lose too much polar ice. And lastly, some of you may have looked really closely at this graph and think you've cracked some secret code when you see that for much of this ice age, an increase in atmospheric CO2 has followed warming instead of preceding it, instead of causing it. And while this is true, warming itself can cause atmospheric CO2 to increase, it goes the other way too. An increase in CO2 causes an increase in warming due to the greenhouse effect, but an increase in warming can also cause increasing CO2 due to melting ice that releases methane and CO2. Much of the methane actually gets converted to CO2 over the long term, and this leads to both of these processes causing each other. This is called a positive feedback loop. And these loops in Earth's climate system are actually the reason that we are so worried about reaching what we call tipping points when it comes to modern climate change. Because these end up being these kind of points of no return, which is terrifying. All right, all right. So there's a lot of bad news, but there's got to be something we can do. What can we do? I'm glad you asked. There is absolutely something we can do about this. We're actually lucky compared to all the other past mass extinctions when life on Earth didn't know what the heck was happening and they were just having to go extinct or adapt. We are lucky in that we know what's going on and we can do something about it. And a couple of the major things that we can do is focus on energy transition, transition to renewables. This is unfortunately not black or white. We can't just stop all carbon emissions and go straight to non-carbon emitting energy sources. It is going to be somewhat of a gray area for a while, but we need to work toward that. And two, and potentially even more important moving forward, given how much carbon we've already released to the atmosphere, is we need to focus on sequestering carbon from the atmosphere, taking it out of the atmosphere, not just stopping emissions. And I have a whole video talking about carbon sequestration methods that we can use and induce in Earth's natural systems that can help us take carbon out of the atmosphere. The simplest of which, trees. There's also soils, regenerative agriculture, ocean fertilization, induced silicate weathering, continental weathering. There's a lot of processes that naturally take carbon out of the atmosphere and we can help to increase their rate to help combat climate change. However, if you're not in industry or research or academia, it can feel a little hard to actually make a difference in these areas. So what can you and I, the average Joes, do to help fight for not just climate science, but all science right now? Go to Stand Up For Science rallies this Friday, March 7th, 2025, 12 through 4. I'll see you there.